This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. This is the first of several lectures on Chapter 20 of the Paper P4 course, course notes on interest rate risk management. Uh, and first of all, just a little bit by way of introduction to explain what risk exactly it is we're talking about. Because a lot of people think this is very obvious. But uh, you may actually be surprised. And um, the numbers that follow all become rather stupid unless uh, you really understand the nature of the risk. Uh, because what we're talking about is a company perhaps borrowing money and therefore paying interest. Or less likely, it could be the company's depositing money and receiving interest. But if we stick to the situation of uh, borrowing money for the moment, uh, then, of course, we're going to have to pay interest. And the obvious risk um, that we're open to, or we're exposed to, is that interest rates stand to change from day to day. But there's an easy way of avoiding that risk, and it's to take out a loan at fixed rate interest. There's two standard ways of borrowing money. You can either borrow at a floating rate, and if you borrow at floating rate, um, the interest changes uh, from day to day. And you pay whatever the interest happens to be uh, on almost a daily basis. Or alternatively, you can borrow money on a fixed rate basis. In which case, I hardly need write down, but the interest rate remains fixed. If you negotiate a six-month loan at a fixed interest rate of, let's say, 10%, then it stays at 10%. Whatever happens to interest rates in the future is irrelevant to you. Now, it stands to reason that if you're borrowing at floating rate, you're at risk of interest rate changes, whereas if you borrow at fixed rate, you're not. And we'll discuss in the next chapter why you might prefer to borrow floating or you might be, uh, prefer to borrow fixed. But, and this is the bit that may be surprising, for this chapter and for most of the important numbers in the exam, we're only going to be looking at fixed rate borrowings. And of course the question becomes, why is there any risk? Um, because I've already said, if we borrow at fixed rate, if we negotiate a loan today for six months at a fixed rate of 10%, uh, then clearly it is fixed. In that sense, there is no risk. It doesn't matter what happens to rates in the future. But the reason there can be a problem is this. Just suppose I told you, and I'm not going to actually do any numbers on this. We'll save the numbers until later. But suppose I told you that we want to borrow uh, let's say half a million for three months and suppose we're going to have fixed rate borrowing Uh, and suppose I tell you, I say we're not going to actually do numbers on it, I just want to explain the problem. But suppose I tell you that as of today, uh, the bank is quoting uh, interest of 10% per annum fixed for three month borrowing. Obviously, from day to day, the bank can quote different rates. But as of today, they're quoting 10%. And so if we negotiate the loan today, we will pay 10% fixed. And in that sense, we zero risk. But the problem is this. We want the loan to start...
in two months time. We don't actually want to borrow the money today. We've done our cash flow projections. For whatever reason, we've decided that in two months time, we will need a loan of half a million for three months. But again, we won't need it to start until two months from now. And the problem is that even though today the bank is quoting 10% fixed for loans starting today, clearly, by the time we negotiate the loan, in two months' time, they could be quoting a completely different rate. They might be quoting 15% for three-month borrowing, or they might be quoting 5%. But the point is, if we do nothing, if we simply wait two months, then we are at risk. And the risk we're talking about is that interest rates may change between now and the start of the loan. Now that's the problem. Now clearly interest rates might go down, and if they do, great. Um, we'll end up paying less interest. But of course interest rates may go up. But the point is, if we're doing any sort of uh, cash budget whatsoever, how are we going to budget for how much interest we'll be paying? We've no idea what the interest rates will be in two months' time. And if we want to uh, attempt to remove, reduce the risk, the risk we're talking about is precisely what I've just written, that the rate may change between now and the start of the loan. And when we come to look through the various uh, opportunities available to us to reduce or to remove that risk, be very, very clear that's what we're talking about. For this chapter, we're going to have fixed interest borrowings. Once the loan starts, there's no more risk. In too much time, they'll be quoting 12%. Fine, 12%. It is then fixed. But the risk is that as of today, we don't know what the rate will be uh, on the date the loan starts. Now, I hope that's clear because, as I say, the numbers that follow, uh, some of them are rather messy, but they make absolutely no sense. We can all learn rules, but it all becomes very silly unless you realise what risk it is that we're concerned about. I'm not going to say it a third time, but... Make sure you are happy what, what's in that box on the screen. Now, the various opportunities available to us, if you just turn over for a moment to page 116. Now, the methods that are available that you are expected to be aware of, uh, forward rate agreements, interest rate guarantees, we'll look at them shortly, and you'll uh, find both of those are very easy indeed. Um, what's a fair bit more complicated using interest rate futures and interest rate options. Uh, there's also mention of uh, something called interest rate swaps, uh, but that's a completely different issue, uh, and I'll explain them. We'll look at them in, in the next chapter. But for this chapter, to manage that risk of rates changing between now and the start of the loan, forward rate agreements, interest rate guarantees, futures and options. Well, that was just the introduction. In the next lecture, we'll look at the two very easy ones, forward rates agreements, interest rate guarantees.